few reasons. One, because uh, is uh, someone that uh, uh, we met uh, in uh, through the travels that we did in, uh, in South Africa back in November. And uh, immediately, um, I'm just going to give it away because I say he and being the only man in, in this room right now is quite easy to identify. But he was a sponge from the first moment we sat down. And someone, uh, I've met very few people in my life uh, who take action so fast as him. And I think that we can all learn from him, myself included. Uh, he wanted to uh, get into professional speaking and say, I want to build my speaking business. So what do I need to do? And uh, we were sitting next to each other with me and Lovelda. Uh, I gave her, I show him uh, the, my, my, my speaking website, my showreel. I showed him my Lovelda speaking website, Lovelda showreel. No word of a lie. A week later, I think uh, he had a showreel. He had a speaker website completely done. He had a videographer at the event because he spoke at the event there in South Africa. He had a videographer going around asking for testimonials of the presentation. And later, Marcel, I will ask you to put actually the website in the chat so then people can see how was it that was in a week. Then he joined GTEx. And at the beginning, when we started working together, he wanted to do, it was he created an online course to help uh, more introverts uh, being able to be more comfortable in social situations and networking situations. And then he decided to change uh, the direction because he wanted to create entrepreneurial dinners. No word of a lie, in a month or two, now he's running entrepreneurs dinner in Bali, in uh, Texas, if I remember well, in Austin, in um, uh, whereas in Amsterdam, you did another one. And then we are, he, he convinced me to, to help him organize one in London, which we are doing actually on the 8th of July. Uh, you're going to receive some invitation about that as well. And I think we have a lot to learn from him because he's someone that he has an idea and he just, you don't hear much from him because he does things. And uh, that's, that's a great quality. So without further ado, can we give Marcel a massive round of whoop whoops here in the chat? Congratulations, GTEx member of the month. Incredibly, incredibly well, well deserved. Uh, so Marcel, let's start with a quick introduction about yourself. And um, uh, let's start with a quick introduction about yourself so we can, uh, uh, people can, can understand a bit more about your background first. Yeah, how can I get over this introduction that you already gave? Ah, oh, this man, was you quite a, it, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, to, to go tell us a bit more about your background. What were you doing before? Okay, yeah. So I used to run a more IT-related business. So I had a website called Trending Jobs, and it was a platform for people in the US to find jobs, mostly blue-collar jobs, and. I run that until January 1st of this year, and then someone else took over my role. And I started looking for something that was a business that was more aligned with what I enjoy doing. Um, and I, I was looking for that for like half a year or something. When we met in South Africa, I had a different plan than I have now. So everyone really helped and just do a ton of experiments. And what I do now came from, it or developed organically. While I was in Bali, I wanted to meet up with entrepreneurs. I wanted to be an in-person event. And I ideally wanted to be a dinner at a nice place. It's not too loud and where I could make multiple connections specifically with entrepreneurs. And it wasn't there. So that is the initial reason I started organizing dinners and events for entrepreneurs. And that developed organically really quickly as well. Like it grew every week, uh, more people came in, people brought other people as well. They were a perfect match for the group. And then I was like, hey, I'm doing all this work to build an online business. And I feel like organizing those in-person events specifically for entrepreneurs, I enjoy that a lot more. And I'm doing that, I'm solving a problem for a target audience that also has money to spend if I solve a problem for them, if I give a good experience. 
So that was the moment that I decided, okay, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to build a community for entrepreneurs focused on in-person fun experience that um, revolve around human connection rather than being very tra uh, transactional networking events. And that's what I'm working on now. And uh, and that's uh, and that's where we are. Uh, so I'm going to ask Marcel a couple of questions. This is as part of the mastermind. This is a chance also for you to ask Marcel uh, some questions. Uh, uh, can be about uh, it's mainly about how he does things or how he sees things. Don't ask him, hey, what do you think is the best marketing strategy for my business? This is our role, okay? So the kind of question we're going to accept here is uh, something to get to know him better or some for him to share an experience, for him to share maybe something that he did on a business level, on a personal level to get a certain result. So think about it. And I would love you to start now, start writing questions. I got two more, and then I'm going to start reading the questions that you're putting out. Uh, so first of all, uh, you were running another business before, uh, which was completely different from what you're doing now. I want to ask you if there is one thing that you did in the other business that you are taking with you that is helping you massively in creating this one. Yes, in the early stages of my previous business, I was trying to do a thousand things at, a, at the same time. Um, every idea looked like a good idea and it looked profitable, so let's try it and Let's see if it works, like the spaghetti against the wall approach. And through both advice from other people and through own experiences, I learned to focus on one thing at a time and do that really well and become the best at that. That is the main thing I'm taking away. And that's also why my uh, current business focus is so specific. So focus, focus. focus. That's what yeah. fo focus on uh, focus on uh, what uh, what you want to build. Which now gives me to another question, and the other question is what helps you decide what to focus on? Because when you are doing the spaghetti against the wall approach, you know you could focus on every single spaghetti that you're throwing. And I think that's also sometimes a challenge that I have, that every entrepreneur have. Is like, okay, which spaghetti that I'm throwing? I'm actually focusing on. And how do I know if it's the right one or not? Do you have a sense or do you have a way to explore it or just chance? Or what has been your experience? Yeah, so this is where it also differs. Like my second business differs from my first business. My first business, I wanted to have an income so I could travel the world and become a digital nomad and just be anywhere. So I just wanted something that generated profit with the least amount of hours as possible. So I optimized for that. Now the second business, it's way more important to me that I do something I really enjoy. And it's, mm, I'm building something that I think is important and something that I would do even if I didn't get paid for it. For it. So, like it depends on your situation it like in building this entrepreneur community i fortunately had some uh, some income and some savings so i could be really patient and try a bunch of things out and see what i enjoyed doing and where that activity um also solves a problem for other people that have an income to spend on that where those two meet, that's where I focused on. Mm -hmm. So something that you enjoy. So you've tried a few things. Uh, then you found what you enjoy the most, which aligns with what people would spend money on. Okay, so this is the thing people will spend money on and the people that have the right income to spend. And this aligns with what I can do, the, what I love doing the most. Yes. Is that correct? And what I'm okay. able to do as well. Like, I feel like um it comes rel relatively easy for me to bring people together and to organize in-person events i've been doing that for years also for digital nomads when i didn't get paid for it like i, I do it all the time so it comes relatively easy to me and uh yeah 
Yeah, you know what's interesting? I think there is a lesson uh, here for everyone. And uh, some of you might already have used this approach, but it's also asking yourself, uh, uh, what is the thing, who, who I, what am I about outside my business? Like who am, who am I without my business? This was one of the questions that it was incredibly hard for me to answer. But finding that answer helped me also create GTEx because I remember when I, even when I was a kid in, um, um, in my group, I remember people making some comments saying, oh, Simone, like the moment you left, we didn't, we missed like the glue of our community, of our group, because I was the one having like five, 500 groups of, tr- of friends. And then I would bring people together from one group and meet people in the other group. And it makes sense, actually, that I'm doing what I'm doing with GTEx and building this community and bringing people together and supporting each other and creating a good experience for each other. Marcel was already doing events and organizing it because he enjoyed it. And then he said, oh, actually, I can make a business out of it. So even in the way you do things, think about how can you align it in the most natural way for you? I remember, you know, many of you know Caroline Sylvia Rag, our marketing coach, and she's our success coach. She's also, I mean, she does so, so much things for GTEx. She's our success coach. She also works in sales. So she does a sales consultation. She's also our partner's manager. I gave her Caroline that opportunity because naturally she was creating introductions without even me asking. So what comes natural to you, there is, there is a thread there. And thank you for sparking this conversation, Marcel. I want to start with the first question from Deborah. And I would love to see a bit more questions here. So now we have, uh, so I'm going to start with a question from Deborah and then start writing other questions for Marcel. Um, Deborah, the first one is, uh, this is the second time I've, I've heard about in-person, face-to-face uh, working, um, uh, networking today. Do you think this is the new way of working after so many years of Zoom meeting? And if so, does it require people travel all over the world to meet? Or do you envision people coming together in their own communities? Yeah. Okay, deep question. Let's see. Um, Because so many people, so many different preferences. um, I, I do also meet people who say like, okay, this, these virtual meetings, I'm really enjoying them. It gives, it gives me more time to spend with my family and I'm just enjoying being at my home. So there certainly is that group of people. And for those people, I would say maybe not. Maybe it's not, not necessarily more moving towards in-person um, meetings. I personally have a very big preference for meeting people in person, being in the same room, sharing experiences together. Being that person who prefers that and organizing events for that group of people causes kind of a filter bubble. So the people I speak, they're like, oh, thank God, finally in person meetings again, because we can't go to the office anymore. They closed it down and everything's on Zoom. And I enjoy it so much to spend an in-person, uh, to go to an in-person event. So, yeah, so many people, so many preferences. I, I do f- have a feeling that for everyone, it would be very important to have some in-person experience at the very least. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Deborah, for the question. And uh, there were actually like more important questions in there as well that I feel like should be addressed as well. So because um, does it require people to travel all over the world or do you envision people coming together in their own communities? So I used to be a digital nomad or maybe I kind of am. I don't know what the definition is and who checks that. But anyway, I used to travel around the world and move places quite quickly and I became a lot happier and better connected after slowing down my travel. So um, where I live is based on the community I want to have at that moment. So I think it could be very much centered around local communities. You don't need to travel all over the world. I do because in the Netherlands, it gets too dark, too cold and too rainy in the winter. 
but just for the community, I could have stayed in Amsterdam. Uh, thank you for expanding on that. That's a great, that's a beautiful answer. And it's about finding your dynamic and uh, whatever allows you, whatever makes you, because everyone is going to have a different, as Marcel said, there's different situations, family, commitments, uh, places that they would love to stay. So then in that case, they'll find the, your own dynamic. Marky has a question. Now that you're building a business that is more in alignment with you as a person, do you see a time when you will step away and move on to something else? If so, do you have an exit plan? I could do this for the rest of my life. And even if I had like an endless amount of money, it's probably what I would be doing. So I don't have a plan to step away from this specific business for the communities. For example, the one in Amsterdam, I don't want it to depend on me because I want to go to Bali when it gets cold. So it's a yes and no. I don't want it to be dependent on me, but uh, I want to keep doing and uh, keep involved in this forever the way I see it now. Okay, thank you. Um... Fiona, do you do hybrid events? So in person and also Zoom, those who can attend. Yeah, maybe that relates to the focus question. I now focus on creating the best possible in-person experiences. Doing hybrids is a little bit of a different ball game. So I first want to do this perfect and maybe at some point there will be something hybrid, but I don't know yet. Um, so I, I, I envision at least for the next year, the next two years, only focus on in-person events. Thank you. And then, uh, Joanna, this is a more of a comment than a question, which was, um, and then she also has a question, but the comment from John was, your life demonstrates your values. According to Dr. John Martini, um, when you live according to your highest value, you become inspired and awaken your genius. Absolutely agree with that. And the question that she has is, is there one thing you do every day to keep you on track? For example, a morning routine or something else? Well, um, actually not really. And I don't know if it's the best way. I think I might be outperformed by people who had like a similar level of intelligence and fire in them to do this and they had routines but well the only routine that i have is in the morning i don't do meetings before like 11 a.m or noon and i just it's just myself focusing on my business making a clear to-do list and working that morning on the things that are that are like needle movers so maybe that is actually kind of a routine. Yeah. So I'm trying, I'm trying not to be reactive, but to be proactive in how I approach my days. It's, but it, like what it is, it's different every day. Hey, thank you. And it's a great example, like for, because everyone will work in a different way. Some people respond better with very strict routine. Some people, they might be like, okay, what am I going to do today? Some people, they might have routines throughout the day. Um, I think we can all find that we're three divorce for us as, as human beings. Yeah. And uh, also people who like need that human contact and that little interaction to get energized in the morning. So it is different. It's not like I'm doing it the right way or the wrong way. It's just different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a question from Danielle because, uh, and we, we might have covered this already, but it said instead of having other people join you for your in person event, do you travel across the world to create in-person events in other communities? Okay, so what has happened so far is that I already traveled to places and then I decided to organize events there. Um, I haven't traveled yet specifically to organize events, but actually the event in London that Simone mentioned earlier, that is more like, okay, I'm traveling there because uh, it would be very fun to do a dinner in, in London. So a little bit, but most of the time it's just I'm traveling somewhere because I want to go there anyway. And then I organize the events. 
All right. which uh, which actually let me plug it if you're in london uh then reach out to me or marcel we'll send you the link and uh, it's gonna be exactly a month from now on the 8th of july <laughs> so exactly on the 8th of july which is the day after the speaker awards that we are doing uh, which was really interesting also to think about how to maximize your time what i like about marcel is that um he, he thought about a way to maximize his time in london so he applied for the speaker awards he entered them is coming to the speaker awards dinner it was like well i'm already there there are going to be a bunch of people already there because of the speaker awards why don't we invite people for dinner i think there is a lot of lesson here in leverage because uh, if you see what he what he did on a business level and this is great for partnership no we talked a lot about partnership building this is a partnership right he saw me doing something, the Speaker Awards in London. I, we are bringing people all over the UK, some parts of Europe and the world to London. They are staying over most of, more likely for the following day unless they're already based in London. So he said, hmm, this could be a great time to organize a dinner. Let's see if Simone is open to it. So now he's leveraging all the work that we did for the past uh, six months He's leveraging for the dinner. And I love that because this is what creates great partnerships. Is that how can we create something that adds value to both parties? He has needs connection in London. We already have. I wanted to do a dinner already because I've talked a lot about the redoing more things in person in London. So here you go. And this aligned perfectly. So then I, I decided to say yes. So 8th of July is going to be in London. We are in Piccadilly at the Century Club. Uh, I think we have like a 20 pound joining fee, if I remember well, which is given to charity. And then everyone pays for their own dinner uh, while we are there. And we're going to have a good time connecting, sharing. And then of course we have a great host in Marcel. Um, I think we can now wrap up the interview. Marcel, if there is a uh, and everyone here, I would love you to write something or a nugget that you got from this interview, something that helped you either see things in a different way, or maybe was a reminder for you um, that you got out from this particular interview. And um, in the, while you're doing that, I want to ask you, Marcel, how, if you have a final message that you would like to leave uh, people with um, that after this, uh, this sharing. Yeah, so um, this is basically for everyone who feels like, okay, I, I would love to have more like-minded people around me to meet up in person, to learn from, to keep each other accountable, like whatever you want to share. If it's not organized wherever you are at the moment, it is quite easy and very rewarding to be the organizer of the thing you would have loved to attend if someone else had organized it. Yeah, yeah, you know what this um you know what this reminds me of? How we started GTEx. Mm. This exactly was why we started GTEx because we wanted to be to do events. And it's not that there were not events in London, but we were too young to speak and no one knew us and we didn't know what we were doing. So we said, well, let's organize events ourselves. <laughs> we invite a bunch of speakers, and that's how 10 years ago GTEx started in a farm and look at us now. And uh, I cannot wait to see how your journey is going to unfold in your events, uh, man, because uh, you got a heart of gold. You, you are a person that gives. Um, and uh, for everyone here, please connect with Marcel, uh, not just for the dinner, but also for connection. If you know someone else that could benefit from the dinners, reach out to Marcel, make those connections and introductions because that's why we are here as a community to help and support each other. We can see a lot of messages from people, um, from everyone. Um, Marcel gets his energy from doing something that he truly really loves. Uh, from market, the power of blocking out time every day to focus on your business. So moving the needle. Linda, I love that Marcel had an idea and just run with it. The magic happens when you're brave. Deborah, great to hear someone also feeling that following what you love is the way to go. Interesting idea to create events. Thank you. Claire, focus on what you love and recognize how you can leverage it into a business. That plus, I think, of what you would like to, to exist and make it yourself. Brilliant. 
uh, I wish London wasn't so far away. I know Mark, you will do more things in the US, we'll do more things in Canada. That's uh, this is in our plans, it's coming. And uh, maybe Marcel is going to organize a dinner there. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Danielle, be brave. And as Linda said, uh, to actually doing what you believe in as um, and love and transmit that passion to others. Okay, so can we give a massive round of whoop whoops to Marcel? Thank you very much, Marcel. You are absolutely brilliant and it's a pleasure having you here. Congratulations for being the GTEx member of the month. Thank you so much. Uh,